and then, to their horror, the bear turned back towards them and began lumbering over. Charlotte fired a second shot into the air. She reloaded, but it was too late. The bear was upon them. Holly shouted and threw their backpacks at the bear. Thursday, August 24th, 2017. It was a normal August morning in Spitzbergen Svalbard. Two young researchers, Charlotte and Holly, had spent the past six weeks studying the effects of climate change on ice-dependent flora and fauna. The pair would be flying home in just two days' time. In the Arctic Circle, the UK research station in Spitzbergen is operated annually from March to September. It's one of 14 internationally operated stations, forming a unique research community on the island. Researchers from across the globe travel there to study the geology and ecology of this stunning yet brutal environment. Temperatures can dip as low as minus 20 degrees Celsius, and for four months of the year, the sun doesn't rise. Upon arrival, each researcher is given lectures in basic Arctic survival, including how to operate a rifle. As well as the dangers from one of the harshest climates on Earth, polar bears are often on the prowl. If you're visiting Spitsbergen for more than a few days, you are likely to see one of these incredible animals. For safety reasons, it's a requirement that every group that ventures out must carry at least one rifle. Polar bears are well adapted to this unforgiving environment. They have a layer of fat more than 10 centimeters thick and such thick fur that the bears are regularly at risk of overheating. They have paws up to 30 centimeters in diameter, which help them walk through the snow and enable them to be expert swimmers. Their claws, each five centimeters long, help with traction on the sea ice, as well as grabbing slippery prey. Adult males can weigh up to 600 kilograms and females almost half that. When standing on its hind legs, an adult male can exceed three meters tall. Charlotte and Holly, two researchers from the UK, were packing up their tent after weeks in the field. They were to walk approximately one mile back to the fjord where their motorboat was moored up. From there, they would motor across the water to the research base, where they were looking forward to a shower and a change of clothes. Busy packing up their belongings, they took their eyes off the horizon for too long. They failed to spot a large male polar bear approaching from the north. Both girls jumped when the bear was merely 20 meters away. It raised its head to sniff the air. Its incredible olfactory senses can smell a seal on the ice 20 miles away, and it can see as well as a human. Instinctively, Charlotte grabbed the rifle. She fumbled with the mechanism and then fired a warning shot into the air. The polar bear flinched and briefly turned away. Both girls stood together, catching their breath, watching intently. And then, to their horror, the bear turned back towards them and began lumbering over. Charlotte fired a second shot into the air. She reloaded, but it was too late. The bear was upon them. Holly shouted and threw their backpacks at the bear. This distracted him just enough for the girls to retreat, but they were trapped. Behind them, only pack ice floated ominously on the icy Arctic Sea. In front of them, a very, very hungry male bear. They had no choice. The bear's lowered head gently swayed from side to side as it muzzled their belongings. The girls carefully climbed onto the ice. Polar bears predominantly hunt seals. They are ambush predators relying on seals that pop up through the breathe holes in the ice. During the open water season, in which large volumes of ice melt, polar bears can struggle to find food, often fasting for several months. This is when they're at their most dangerous. When seals are harder to hunt, the bears are known to scavenge, often devouring the carcasses of bowhead whales and walruses. Aggressive and very, very hungry, male polar bears become opportunistic hunters. Within moments, the bear charged at the two girls on the ice, its ears pinned back, its head down low and running up to 25 miles per hour. It launched itself at the pair. Charlotte was knocked into the water, 
When she resurfaced, she heard the blood-curdling scream of her friend and the ear-splitting crunch as the polar bear sunk its five-centimeter-long canines into Holly's skull. With the strongest bite force amongst all bears, Holly was dead within seconds. Charlotte scrambled about in the frigid water. Her heavy thermal clothing was dragging her down. Her muscles were seizing up, and her breasts were short and desperate. She grabbed onto a ledge of ice and managed to pull herself up. Looking back over her shoulder, the bear, merely five meters away, snorted. Charlotte tried to get to her feet, but her body was screaming out pain. She gasped for air, clutching her chest. When she managed to catch her breath, she sat up. The bear's snout was now bright red and dripping, Ollie's body motionless on the ice. Charlotte retched and threw up. She summoned all her strength and hauled herself onto her feet. She managed to jump back onto the solid ice, but when she landed, she let out a cry. She discovered a large gaping wound in her lower leg. One of the bear's long claws must have caught her when it pounced. Charlotte took off her soaking wet jacket and tied the arm sleeves around her lower leg. She needed to move and she needed to move now. Every so often, the polar bear, still feasting on her friend's body, paused and looked up at Charlotte. It was interested. The rifle had been knocked into the water during the attack. Charlotte had a decision to make, walk back towards the bear and find their radio amongst their belongings or make a break for it. She decided to radio for help. Inching closer to the bear, Charlotte cautiously rummaged through her backpack and pulled out the radio. Crying down the crackling line, Charlotte breathed a sigh of relief when colleagues at the station acknowledged her call. Hesitantly, Charlotte began hobbling away from the bear once again. She was leaving a trail of bright red blood in the pristine white snow. Every time the bear raised its head to look at Charlotte, her heart would stop. The initial flood of adrenaline was wearing off now and Charlotte's injury was excruciating. She stumbled across the icy tundra, pausing every now and then to squeeze her wound, take deep breaths, and summon the strength to carry on. In the distance, Charlotte could hear a faint rumbling sound. It grew louder and louder until upon the horizon, she could see a helicopter. She waved her arms frantically above her head and shouted as loudly as she could. The chopper neared the injured researcher. Charlotte glanced back and saw a sight that froze the blood in her veins. The polar bear was advancing towards her. She turned and ran. The bear was gaining fast. Was this the end? Was this how she was going to be remembered? She screamed at the helicopter, and just then, two shots rang out. Someone fired from the helicopter door and hit the polar bear in the chest. Charlotte saw the great beast fumble and fall onto the snow-covered ground. It let out a deep, guttural moan, took a few labored breaths, and was still. Charlotte's research project had come to a devastating and tragic end. And while some inspiringly tried to preserve this incredible and vital habitat for the species that lived there, we would do well to remember that this is their habitat, not ours.